A little Dutch affair here in Michael the last 16, and the last game didn't hang around. Luke Humphreys blitzing Daryl Gurney 6-2, and I don't expect this one to take too long. Outside. Two players that just like to get on with it. Richard Veenstra dispatching of Johnny Clayton in, um, in the previous round, and uh, will look to take another Premier League scalp here. He's got the early advantage of winning the ball, and he's going to kick things off. But it's been an impressive start to his PDC career, Richard Veenstra, and I think... People are starting nice to take notes of this man, Rob. Yeah, he's a very decent operator. There's no question about that. And Van Gerwen will need to be 140. pretty much near the top of his game not to get embroiled in a big match here with Flyers. Because if Feenstra, as we know, can average close to 100, Van Gerwen is going to have to play well. MVG, as we know, as we've seen in the Premier League this year over the last Eight month three. or so, has stepped it up quite considerably, winning three consecutive Premier League nights and pushing himself to the top of the Premier League 58. by some distance. Yeah, it's been a better day for Van Gerwen as well. He lost up to Luke Woodhouse in round one, but got his way through to the last 16. 96. Beat Euron van der Velde in the last 32 to book this tie with Richard Veenstra. 100. And a good last start from Rich, Richard. And we saw Veenstra on the stream yesterday and was very unlucky in the end. He was 5 1 down to Dimitri Vandenberg. 96. And then got back to 5 apiece before missing 2 to complete the turnaround at double tops to win 6 5. And his campaign ended in the second round. 58. A positive display. And for Veenstra, I think it's going to be a good, a good steady year. He's just getting to grips with. 45. Kind of the new surroundings of the PDC. It's a lot different to where they used to apply his trade over in the WDF and the now defunct BDO. Twenty-eight. Can't find an early holder throw. Can't afford these misses against Michael Van Gerwen. No, no indeed. Double yeah, sixteen. Sure. And that's why you can't afford those kind of misses. Van Gerwen would not expect to get many opportunities to have six turns to the board against the throw but on that occasion 17 Anyone. dart break was enough to put the green machine in front this is for a place in the quarterfinals today if it gets through this match to get to the quarterfinals they're going to have a bit of a wait because they're awaiting the winner of Dirk van Dijvenmode to face Ian White or Joe Cullen Ian White and Joe Cullen currently three apiece and the winner then plays Dirk to play the winner of this so 137 There'll be plenty to ponder in terms of waiting for their match once they've got the job done here. But nice problem to have. If you're winning games and you're waiting around to play another game, you're not going to be 60. too disgruntled by it. Colin and Ian White, as I mentioned, three apiece there. Similar oh, averages as well. Forty-three. Van Gerwen heads to Nottingham 93. on Thursday when he'll face Peter Wright in his opening quarter-final. 140. Which way for MVG? Goes bullseye for tops. Game confident. Shot. Yeah, very confident finish in there. That's a two-leg lead and uh, no sort of reaction, but will be pleased with the opening exchanges here. His good friend Vincent van der Voort is still going as well. He's just got underway. He's the leg down to Dave Chisnell in the last 16. A much needed run for Vincent. Been a bit of a slow start, but good to see him in the mix at the back end of the tournament. This isn't the only old Dutch affair in this round either. Gian van Veen taking on Jermaine Watermain. They're currently one apiece. Van Veen just beating James Wade. Ninety-two. You've just got to be careful here, Richard. Two nil down, and a poor start in this leg. He can't find a treble. Sixty. And then you, no, there you could be an air of the here, match being over before it's even begun, or barely begun. We always talk about going a couple of breaks down, but 60. when you're a couple of breaks down to Michael Van Gerwen, it's a sizable task further, isn't it? And you just well, it's not a tactic I'd recommend. No, I've done it a few times, and it doesn't end well. Believe me. Yeah, tends to end in a crushing defeat, Martin, doesn't yeah, it, to be it honest? Does. 
Oh, I've been known to go four or five nil down to him. How did that end? Yeah, similar. Similar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, he's he's not a man to be given starts to busy because once he clicks into gear, then he can demolish you in next to no time. Yeah, and even if he does have a little wobble where you get a couple of legs, he generally just gets back on track, doesn't he? That's some important moments here, I think, because Veenstra needs to take out 92. Otherwise, it'll almost certainly be 3-0. It's not happening to Veenstra here at all, is it? It's just... No. 40. And it's not an explosive Michael Van Goon. It's a good performance from Michael Van Goon, but not one that Game you'd shot. expect to blow you away. But that is 3-0 and two breaks of throw. And uh, your fear for Veenstra here now... He rallied against Dimitri Vandenberg yesterday, but he was playing a lot better than this. He was he was hard done by to be five on down. There were some ridiculous ball finishes from Dimitri, wasn't there? I think three yeah. in total. He was just everything went for Dimitri in those six legs to get him the lead. But this on this occasion, Veenstra sixty. Just not performing. This is a Michael Van Gerwen averaging around ninety-four, so 58. this is not peak MVG by any stretch of the imagination. But it's so far been enough to coast into a 3 0 advantage. 140. Missing just the one dart at the double. And that bull, bull tops as well on the 90, a confident finish. 96. Bit of breathing space for Ian White in the rema last remaining, last 32 game, 5 3 leads Joe Cullen. 100. Yeah, this is not the kind of match where there would be a long Michael Van Gerwen highlights reel, but the bull tops finish would probably be the highlight so far from MVG. And we could have a three-figure out shot here from the former world champion. 60. Treble needed. He's going right. I thought he may have gone left. He's just... Uh, great decision. Great execution, and this is just clinical for Michael Van Gerwen, and Richard Veenstra has not had a chance. And Van Gerwen, with an average in the mid-90s, is cruising here, 4-0 he leads. And uh, when Michael Van Gerwen's averaging 95 and a half, that, well, that's what represents a real good chance against him, isn't it, Rod? And Veenstra will feel that, yeah, he hasn't played anywhere near like he can, and it's a sizable task for him now. Of course, we've got no idea what would have happened if Veenstra had played better. There's every likelihood Van Gerwen would have played better. We don't know that, but 59. on the face of it, Mark, you're quite right. If if you were told before the match you're playing Van Gerwen first to six legs, best of 11, and he'll average 95, you'd think, well, that's about as much as Seven. I could possibly hope for, because there's a possibility he could average 105, 110, 115. Yeah, the, 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 the champions in this sport, they generally respond to 100. a player up in their level, don't they? We may not find out here because Veenstra just can't click into gear. Searles into the quarterfinals, beating Matt Campbell, 6-3. Yeah, this has the air of one of those 100-metre heats in which Usain Bolt doesn't get out of second gear and, and, and wins in 9.7, easing down. You know that he could run far quicker than that, run 9.5 if necessary. And we know Van Gerwen can play much better than this if necessary, as it may be for the remainder of the tournament from the quarterfinals downwards. Back but he hasn't here. needed to, to produce that mark, has he? No, he hasn't. And even now, Vince just set up. But it would only be for a holder throw. 88. So some opportunities for Vince, a rare chance. Over to double six. Double three, chasing doubles, chasing Vince. and gets there. Big shot for Richard Veenstra. He'd have been panicking coming down for that double three. It's not the nicest switch on the ball, but he executes it and he gets himself in Same. this last 16 tie. Yeah, had he missed that double three, having missed the other two darts, a double on that visit to the board, he was in real danger of going 5-0 down and this match being over in the next two to three minutes. But he's hung on. And the only sort of, I say only hope, but 85. he's going to give Michael Van Gerwen something to think about. He needs a quick break here as well, doesn't he? Yeah. A quick break, and then it gives him a chance to hold to make it 4 3. 95. Van Gerwen suddenly has just got his opponent where he wants him. And 
You'd expect them to just do the professional 60. job and finish the tie off here. Well, Ian White has completed victory over Joe Cullen, so he'll now face Dirk van Dijvenbode to face the winner of this. 139. No finish here for MVG. Stay down for another one over 32. Nine, Outside chance here for Veenstra. Obviously can't take the 176 out, but he tees it up. Van Gogh, well. 40. I'd be disappointed with that. And that just eases the pressure slightly on this 70 for Van Gogh. Not that he was feeling too much pressure anyway. Game and shot. that is 5 1. And. Van Gerwen, one away from a place in the quarterfinals. The much-needed run, he'd be disappointed with going out early yesterday. Been better. 140. Yeah, that was a big shot, wasn't it? Not that Luke Woodhouse isn't a very decent player, that Van Gerwen to go out to anybody in round one is a shock one in any tournament. And there we see, 5-1. We said it wasn't explosive from Van Gogh. We've had the debate whether he would yeah, react yeah. if Richard Veens reacted, but he's not needed to, has he? And looks like he's just going to be in barely out of well, second gear, forward. really, and completing the job here. Could do it in this leg. He's got the throw in the next leg if needed. He's got a couple of breaks in hand. He's in a, very, in a luxury position here. Fifty-five. Forty-three. Well, that's not a great visit from Veenstra, and expect the layup here. He'll stay there. One hundred. Uh, Veenstra to get a second leg on the board. Ninety-seven, fifty-seven for tops will be the route. Magel double 19, all treble 18, gets to treble 18, double 12. 73. This is outside, so a chance of Van Gerwen to wrap this up with a 10 plus finish. And definitely a chance now. Double 18 was the route he picked. Double 12 for Veenstra. Game shot. And the tie goes on. The tie goes on to 5 2, yeah, but you just feel it's a, it's a matter of time. And the most likely time is going to be here and now that Van Gerwen wins the leg on throw, this eighth leg of the match will win 6-2. That's a long odds on chance at this moment. Unless Veenstra has got some kind of magical leg up his sleeve, 12 darts or few, you feel he would need here to deny Van Gerwen a 6-2 victory. Yeah, it's going to be some turnaround, isn't it? And 58. A little opening at the beginning of the leg, that visit without a treble. Well, we saw Luke Humphreys dispatch of Daryl Gurney with six consecutive legs. 96. From 2 0 down in a pretty well. He's won the first four of his match with Chris Landman. He's 4 0 up there. So a, a streak of 10 legs in succession for Cool Hand Luke. Looks like he's heading to the quarterfinals. 140. Yeah, Veenstra. Not going to leave anything here. 81. Gets the last one, but it's no good to him. Six darts of Van Gerwen at 148. He's going to need them as well. 81. So is this the end? 50 left. Double 16 left, almost bust. Hey, Doesn't matter now though, does it? And Van Gerwen wins in a common canter over his fellow Dutchman Richard Veenstra, who never really got started. And Van Gerwen eases home and eases into the quarterfinals with a 6-2 success.